Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm Andrea. And I'm Haley. And you're listening to Inhuman, a true crime podcast. Woohoo. Yay. Um, so before we get started, I just want to say just a little something um, about the Marines that were killed in Afghanistan. We just want to say that our, th- our thoughts and prayers are with their family and their loved ones. Um, the world is crazy right now, so just try to be kind and, you know, look out for each other because you never know, like, what the next day holds. It's just so crazy Absolutely. between, like, the COVID and now this. Like, when will we get a break? Yeah. But you know, there's bigger things to think about. So I just wanted to just mention that at the beginning of this episode. Yeah, we're definitely thinking about all of them and also about, I know there's a lot of uh, military families that are concerned about what the future of, you know, the military spouse holds. So right. thoughts and prayers to everybody involved and to all the Afghans as well. Exactly. Living this horrible nightmare. Um, I hope that resolution comes soon and we're sending love. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so today I'm going to be covering the case of Kendrick Johnson, which I think I say this like almost every episode, but this is another case that just eats me up, keeps me up at night. Um, I'm just going to say right off the top of, of it before I even get started, like I do think that Kendrick was murdered. I do think potentially it could be an accident maybe not but I do think that he was murdered and I feel like he has had no justice and um I think a lot of that has to do with the area that they live in um but I'm hoping that I'm hoping that soon sooner rather than later um this the Johnson family will finally get some justice for Kendrick yeah I'm glad you're covering this one too because I feel like it was big for a, for a little while. Like, I feel like I heard it a lot. And then lately it just hasn't, I feel like it was almost overshared. Like everybody was talking about it. And yeah. then now it's just like, nobody's talking about it. But like, I agree with you. I think he was murdered. There was something, something, some sort of uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like conspiracy? No, like just uh, foul play. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, foul play. Okay. There's <laughs> some sort of foul play around his death and I really hope that there will be justice one day for him which is why we want to share you know these types of cases so I'm really glad you're covering this case yes so Kendrick Johnson better known as KJ by his family and loved ones was a 17 year old young man who grew up with his family in Valdosta Georgia which is way at the bottom of Georgia I've actually been there one of my friends was stationed down there in the Air Force and I went down there to visit him it's very um, like swampy and sweaty mm-hmm. and hot. <laughs> Sounds um, like that's all I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kendrick played three sports for Lowndes High School, um, and he dreamed of one day becoming a professional football player. So he's very talented, very smart. He loved school, and you know, he did. From what I can tell, he did really well in school. You know, he's a high school kid. Like, no one really, like, loves, loves school in high school. But (laughs) true. (laughs) He loved playing sports. So that gave him the motivation to do well in school. Because you have to do well in school to play sports. Yeah, that's awesome. So Kendrick's father, Kenneth, was a truck driver. And his mother, Jacqueline, a.k.a. Jackie, was a homemaker. She loved her kids, loved taking care of her kids. Um, He had a sister. So... There was some, I couldn't really find anywhere. Like I literally Google searched every possible terminology for like how many siblings he had. Um, Because I did watch the documentary that just came out, Finding Kendrick Johnson. And his mom said that like she was naming all her kids and like grandkids. So I'm not sure if he just has a brother and a sister or if he has two Mm. sisters and a brother. But I know for sure he has a sister named Kenyatta and a brother named Kenneth Jr. Okay. So his father and all of his siblings all had the initials KJ, which for them represented King Jesus. So they had, you know, their faith and they were Christians. And I thought that was kind of neat. So I wanted to include that. Yeah, Um, that's so cool. I love when families have stuff like that. Even the grandkids are all KJ too. So, but he was the only one. He was the only one, I think, that actually went by KJ. Okay. January 10th, 2013 started out as any normal day for the Johnson family. 
Uh, Kendrick went to school as he normally did. Their father was on a work trip and he was in New York City at the time or New York State at the time. And he had spoken to Kendrick the day before, which he often did um, when he was out of town. He would talk to, you know, his wife and kids daily. However, that afternoon um, when Kendrick didn't get off the bus, his mother Jackie just knew right away something was wrong. You know, mother's instinct. Yep. She told her daughter Kenyatta to get in the car because they were going to go search the area around the school to look for Kendrick. So they, you know, drove up to the school. They kind of drove around the school looking to see if he was, like, outside hanging out with friends or, you know, um, walked around the school. You know, no one had seen Kendrick. They continued to search for him until around midnight, and he had still not returned home. So the following morning, Jackie left and arrived at the school around 8 a.m. with her daughter again to, you know, ask around, look for him. Um, And they noticed that there was like a lot of activity surrounding the gym at the school. And Jackie knew right away that her son was dead. Oh my God. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I hope I never experienced that feeling, but I do imagine that like, cause it's like you have a, almost like a spiritual connection. Like you grew this, Mm -hmm. this person in your body, you know? Right. So I can only imagine that feeling. I don't want to ever imagine that feeling, but yeah. She spoke to the school's resource officer and asked, is that my son Kendrick? And the officer told her it was. However, she was not allowed to identify her son's body. They would not allow her to go into the gym. They wouldn't allow his sister, Kenyatta, to go into the gym. But they did ask her to identify him by a picture of his shoe. Oh, my God. Which is like, I don't know. I mean, she was pretty distraught. You know, she was crying wailing i kind of understand like maybe why they didn't want her in there at the time because they were like trying to get you know whatever evidence they were trying to get together and contain and whatever but like I, i i don't know i just feel like also at the same time like that's his mother and like she deserves to at the very least like make sure whether or not that that's her son right i feel like she should have at least been allowed the option to go if she wanted to like she's an adult yeah if it's not gonna mess up the potential crime scene like she should be able to go identify her son right and then to bring out a picture of his shoe to his sister like right I, i don't know that just seems like very nonchalant i guess to me in a way because like how many people potentially have that shoe you know unless you have like custom made shoes or something like I don't know. I just thought that was very odd. Yeah, I agree. So Kendrick's body was discovered rolled up in one of the gym mats. He was folded or he was found upside down with one arm above his head and one at his side. And his legs were almost like twisted in a crisscross kind of fashion. Like they were kind of crossed at the knees and he had no shoes on. There was a pool of blood around his head, yet the shoes that he was allegedly going in after had no blood on them, and they were at the bottom of the mat. So how would that happen? Yeah. There was another pair of shoes in the gym, um, an orange and black pair, that did have blood splatter on them, but however, they determined later that the blood did not belong to Kendrick, but police did not collect them as evidence. I guess they took a sample of the blood and then didn't take the shoes which I don't know I don't like that yeah I yeah I mean even if you did think it was an accident it's still suspicious and it's still a crime scene and I feel like you should collect all the evidence exactly anything in that vicinity should have been collected right there was also a significant amount of blood that was found on the wall that was tested but it was also ruled out as not being Kendrick's but my question is if it wasn't his then whose was it yeah, why is there blood on the wall of a high school gym? Like, right. at least, te- you know, maybe somebody got hurt or something. But even that, why would there be blood on? No. But yeah. Right. Like, if I was an investigator, I would assume that this could be potentially be evidence. Um, because if there was foul play, this blood could belong to the person who was responsible. Right. Um, so it seems to me like I would take that into evidence as well. Yeah. Another interesting fact worth mentioning was that 
Georgia state law dictates that the coroner be contacted immediately on the discovery of a body. However, the coroner claims that he was not notified until six hours later. But yeah. So that's like a red flag, big fat red flag. Even if you find a body, like even if it is, you believe it's an accident, don't they still call like a medical examiner? Yeah, they sh- yeah, they'll do an autopsy, they'll do yeah, all of that. They should Right. They should like even if you think it's a accident, um even uh what was it? Ann Ann oh, what's her name? The bathtub murder. Bernstein, yeah. Margaret Ann. Yeah. Yeah, they they thought that it was an accident, but they still did an autopsy. Right. You should always unless the family is just completely adamant not to, like you should always do an autopsy, yeah, I think, but Right. I agree. So despite all the evidence, police were quick to rule Kendrick's death accidental. There were also two other pairs of shoes that police found that did belong to him. As I mentioned, the pair that was under him in the mat, um, which, you know, they said that he was going in after. That's how he got stuck in the mat. And then there was also a pair that was in the mat with him behind his knees, which they claimed that... he was going in after the shoes, but the shoes that he had on fell off. But the way that they were positioned was just too perfect. They were side by side and they were right behind his knees. That's weird. Yeah. So many students commented that they would often leave their shoes and other belongings in the mats to avoid paying, you know, the fee to rent a locker. And that typically when your shoes are thrown in, thrown in for storage, and you go back to retrieve them later, you just push up the mat a little and grab them from underneath. Because I mean, yeah, they're like the big, you know, gym mat. So like, they're like the foamy covered in plastic, you know, that kind of mat. Right. And they, you know, they're, they are heavy, but it's something that someone can definitely lift up and grab what they need to grab. Right. Um, and they stated like, typically no one dives into the mat to retrieve their belongings. So the students right away thought that was odd, but I guess the police did not because they still ruled it an accident. Of course. Another thing worth mentioning is that the opening to the mat was 14 inches wide and Kendrick's shoulder width was 19 inches. So if you think about it, which you can't see me, but like he had one arm up, one arm down. If you were going to try to make yourself smaller, I would think that you would have both your hands up almost like in a diving position. Right. Even still like 19 into 14, like. And you're not just going to easily dive into that. Like, it's not like you can dive into that. Stuff yourself into it. Exactly. You're not going to like try to go in and then fall down. You're going to get stuck and have to like wiggle your way down, which you'd probably realize isn't going to happen and figure out a different way to get the shoes. Yeah. And the mats also stood about six feet tall and Kendrick was around 5'10". And this is something that they did frequently. So why is this the first time that he has gotten stuck? You know, if he if he dove into the mats all the time to get his shoes like it does not add up. I'm sorry. It does not add up. No. And why would he this time decide to try to dive in when it clearly yeah. is going to be more difficult? Right. And he could have just reached under the mat. Yeah. So some other damning bit of evidence, in my opinion, is that there are missing time blocks from the CCTV recordings inside the gym. So just like, you know, most schools, there was security footage all around the school and the gym and the lock or not the locker rooms, but in the gym, <laughs> <be weird. laughs> um, in the cafeteria outside the school. Um, however, the camera outside the gym showed several students going in and out of the gym during that time that Kendrick would have been um, going into the gym and potentially getting stuck in this mat based on the CCTV footage. However, the inside gym recordings were missing that chunk of time but there was like it wasn't like they weren't working it was just missing that time like it would jump from like 11.05 to like 105 or something do you know Um, if this was like something that happened on other days of the footage so I'll get into that a little bit later okay (laughs) um so just like keep that in the back of your mind because some of that does does come out but um So like I mentioned, there's a camera pointing to the gym door. 
kids are seen coming in and out. However, inside the gym, the footage is gone. Also, according to the outside of the gym footage, there would have been several students in the gym during the time that Kendrick climbed into the mat, struggled and died. So if he was stuck in the mat, he would have been calling out for help. He would have been screaming. He right. would have been you know, crying, whatever. People would have heard. I mean, even if the gym was loud, like people would have heard him or seen his feet, you know, something. Right. Um, but no, no one ever saw or heard him. So after Kendrick's body had been recovered and taken by the coroner, Kenneth, which is Kendrick's dad, demanded that he be allowed to identify his son's body, which good, good. for him because yeah. I would have done the same thing. When his father went down and saw his son, he felt right away something was not right. One side of Kendrick's face was significantly more swollen than the other which there would be swelling just because he was upside down for so long and he did have so much blood flow to his head. Um, but it appeared that in his father's opinion that he had been in a fight because um, he had like, you know, significantly more swollen on one side. And his arm was still above his head. So the coroner didn't put his arm by beside his body. I don't know why. That's I just weird. thought it was it was very disturbing. Like I, let me tell you, if if you do not want to be sad and disturbed, do not look up pictures of this case. It is very yeah. very heartbreaking. But I did because that's just who I am. <laughs> and the pictures of him, like on the table, mm. um, oh my god, face swollen, arm above his head, and in the documentary, his father also said. That when they opened, I don't know what those things are called, but like where they store the bodies to keep right. them preserved, that the air that came out of there was warm, <gasps> not cold. What? Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, that leads me to think somebody wants his body to decompose faster. That's just my opinion. That's just what I think. Mm -hmm. If that information is true, which why would it, why would he lie about something like that? Just very odd. Yeah, not, that's, not normal. Yeah. Like, I feel like the only reason that should happen is if for some reason there was like some sort of, you know, outage of electricity or something like that. But why would it not be cold? Like those are always cold. I don't know. So as I mentioned before, Kendrick's autopsy did rule his death as accidental due to positional as asphyxia. So basically he was upside down for so long that he choked and he passed away from, you know, the blood and everything being rushed to his head. Okay. Of course, Kendrick's family did not agree with this ruling and they demanded justice. They protested. They wrote letters to investigators Anything and everything they could do, they tried to do. They actually right. got arrested at one point in time for their um, protesting, um, which they said that, that they wanted to do that because they, they, they wanted to do whatever it took to get noticed because the right. only way that this case was going to get more coverage was pe constantly in the media. Unfortunately, their efforts did fall to the wayside. But like I mentioned, they did get a significant amount of media coverage which I feel really helped their case later on down the line. Kendrick's family also decided to release the photos of their son after he was found in the mat. And as I mentioned, these photos were very disturbing, but that's what they were hoping was to ignite something from the public. And they succeeded. The public rallied behind the Johnson family and they protested with them and demanded justice with them, which is amazing. Yeah. The family wanted Kendrick's body re-examined. So in May of 2013, which would be a little over two years after he was buried, um, a judge granted the exhumation of Kendrick's body and they had a private pathologist perform a new, a new autopsy. And what this uncovered was absolutely horrifying. So for starters, Kendrick's organs were missing and in their place, his body had been stuffed with newspaper. Now, this is not a common practice, not in this day and age, like maybe back in the day they would do that. Um, but typically what they do is they remove all the organs, they examine them, 
if they are not going to be donated, then they are put into a bag and put back, like placed back inside the body. So there was no real explanation as to what exactly happened to Kendrick's organs. The original autopsy um, technician uh, said that they did put his organs back or there was also some some speculation that they were quote unquote too damaged. And so they were disposed of, but even still that makes no sense that that is not something that they can decide and do on their own. Right. So there was just like no real explanation as to like why that happened or where, where they were. Cause they weren't, right. they weren't like found anywhere, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. So the new pathologist also concluded that Kendrick had suffered hemorrhaging on the right side of his neck, indicating that it was very probable that he died from blunt force trauma. And he concluded that his death was in fact, not an accident. Yep. So when his father saw him and said, he looks like he's been in a fight, his face is swollen. He was right. I mean, by, you know, from the accounts of this pathologist, Right. So the Johnson family did try to sue the funeral home for mishandling their son's body and perhaps having done so in order to cover up his actual cause of death. But unfortunately, the case was dropped. Nonetheless, his organs were lost and unfortunately could not be tested during the second autopsy. This just further proved to the Johnson family that this was a cover up. Wow. Due to the new evidence, Matthew Moore, the U.S. attorney for the Middle District of Georgia, announced a formal review of the case. The Johnson family also requested a new ruling in their son's cause of death from accidental to non-accidental and demanded that they reopen the case, but this request was denied once again. Are you kidding me? No. Wow. No, I'm not. And, which we're about to get into this a little bit more, but if you, you know, Unfortunately, with a lot of this stuff, there is a lot of politics, um, and that is the speculation as to why they were denied, why their efforts, you know, fell to the wayside, and why this family still has not received justice. God, why does everything have to be so damn political? Like, I know this is the death I know. of a teenager. Just, like, get over it. Exactly. And, you know, there's a lot of speculation around this case that race had a lot to do with it. And, you know, I'm not here to say that one way or another, but I I do agree that if this would have been a white child, that maybe more would have been done. Yeah, I agree with you. So around this time, finally, some information was starting to unfold that Kendrick had had a run in or two with some brothers that went to his school. Brian and Brandon Bell. There was a incident where I guess they were like at a football or they were on their way to a football game and they were like on the bus and Kendrick and Brian had gotten into a fight and Kendrick basically for lap, lack of better terminology whooped Brian's ass and Brian did not like that because he was, <laughs> you know, a big guy, he was a jock, right. like, you know, whatever. Your pride got in the way, but whatever. You got your ass whooped. <laughs> However, these two boys also happen to be the sons of a local FBI agent. And the Johnsons thought maybe they were the ones who were at fault for their son's death. And their father was possibly helping cover up the crime. Oh my God. I didn't, I, I've heard this case before, but I did not remember that. Yeah. While there is no solid proof of this and that, you know, this is actually what happened. Several classmates did back up the fact that these boys had it out for Kendrick. Um, And in in an interview with investigators, Brian Bell claimed that he had absolutely nothing to do with Kendrick's death and that he considered Kendrick one of his best friends, which, I mean, yeah, best best friends get into fights. I get that. You you know, even fist fights when you're guys, because there's like all this testosterone and stuff, but. But I hate when people are like, they they were my best friend, and it's like, "Mm, were they though? Like, were they? I feel like people know when people are really close like that, and if all of a sudden you're just like, yeah, we were best friends. Like, "Mm, I don't know. Yeah, a little, a little sus. Um, you sound like Gen Z. <laughs> I know, we're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and 
And like I mentioned, like the two did play football together. So I guess, and you know, maybe they were friends, maybe they were close at some point in time, you know, you got to kind of be like in good standings right. with your teammates. Yeah. But also during the documentary I watch, which is finding Kendrick Johnson, um, I recommend watching this if you're really, you know, interested in this case. It's on Amazon Prime. Um, the FBI was able to recover some of that missed footage from the day Kendrick went missing. And it's so crazy to me because the um, producer and like the documenter documentarian, is that what they're I think called? So, yeah. Was actually able to get this footage. However, like, the Johnson family never even knew that it existed or had access to it. So, you know, I guess take it with a grain of salt, but I saw the footage myself and it, it looked legit. Wow. But you know, technology's crazy. Who knows? Yeah, you know, true. who really knows? But, but but still, yeah. So there was footage of Kendrick and one of the Bell brothers, I think it was Brandon Bell, walking outside under a yellow awning at the school, even though during their interview, both brothers claim to not have seen Kendrick at all the day that he went missing and died. Okay. So, and I'm like, in the footage, like Kendrick's kind of a little bit ahead of the Bell brother. So it's like, you know who he is. You saw him. Right. Like, it just seems, it, it just seems telling a little bit to me that he didn't say, oh yeah, I saw Kendrick in the morning. Like he was walking to class, blah, 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 whatever. Maybe you forgot, but I feel like if you saw somebody and then they died, like you would not forget. Yeah. Yeah. But again, there were no solid evidence linking the boys to Kendrick's death and no charges were ever brought forth. It is worth mentioning, which I feel like I've said this like 14 times in this case, (laughs) um, that the Bell boy's father, FBI agent Rick Bell, was shortly after asked to resign (laughs) from his position with the FBI after his house had been raided and some other evidence had been found. They did not divulge what this evidence was, unfortunately. And in the documentary, it said that it was not related to the Kendrick Johnson case. However, if he was a suspicious little, you know what, I feel like he would definitely, definitely cover his son's asses if something like this did go down yeah like he's clearly sketchy like even if whatever they found is not in all way related to this case like if he if they found something first of all if they raided like felt the need to raid his place and then they found something that got him fired or like had you know forced him to resign like that's sketchy you're a sketchy person it is and unfortunately that does happen a lot you know and it, it sucks because these people are in these high positions like we're supposed to be able to trust them with like cases and like you know evidence and information and if they're doing things like this like it's just it's really bad it's really really bad yeah and just for the record i'm not accusing anyone of anything i'm not saying whether anyone's guilty or not do not sue me (laughs) this is just you know retelling of the you know the research that i i did right so and just all our opinions and all alleged and nothing right we're not saying anything for sure it's just our opinion yeah so in june 2018 kendrick's body was exhumed for a second time and a third autopsy was performed Which, bless this poor child's soul, because I feel like you cannot rest when your body... But I I understand why his family did this. I do. I I completely understand. I'm not faulting them for it, but... Well, I feel bad for them, too. I know. To see that over and over again, because there was footage, like, his his dad was there, like, his mom was there, and it's just, gosh, can you imagine? I cannot imagine. So, the findings of the second autopsy, that Johnson's death was not accidental... And it was caused by blunt force trauma, likely was confirmed. So basically, the second autopsy, you know, that was performed by the private pathologist, this aut- autopsy confirmed okay, that Kendrick's good. death was not, was not accidental. So now two out of the three are saying the same thing. Right. And it's like, it, you have to trust these people. These people are professionals. Like, yes, they're being paid by the family to do this service, but it's not like they're just like, yeah, I'm going to say whatever you want me to say, right. you know? So the Johnson's family, the Johnson family hoped that with the results of this third autopsy, 
the missing surveillance footage that appeared to have been tampered with, and the botched investigation of the evidence at the scene, this would be enough to reopen their son's case. At that time, sadly, it was not. (laughs) So once again, this poor family does not get any justice. Does not get any. They, it's like they just constantly just like yeah, put you know push them to the side. Yeah. They're not listening. Their ears. Was it the saying? It's falling on deaf ears. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I just feel for them. It was. It's, I mean, to to have your son killed or you know murdered, die whatever, and 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 be so adamant that like something needs to be done and like nothing is being done. Even if you're wrong, even if there is no evidence, even if like they do finally conclude that like, yes, it was an accident, do your due diligence, do do, 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 oh my God, I can't say that word, (laughs) do your due diligence. Yeah. Like you want it, like you want it to be for sure. Like you said, even if it is an accident, you want to know that for sure. And at this point they do not know that for sure. No, they have two pathologists saying, no, it was not an accident, blood force trauma. Yeah. So, finally, (laughs) in March of 2021, so March of this year, Kendrick's case is finally officially reopened. Wow. Oh, my God. I didn't know that. I just got chills. Yes. Yes. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this case because even though there's not a lot of new evidence um, I really feel like it's like crime Jackie says it's the season of justice. And if there's no time like the present, like now is the time to yeah. get this done and find out what really happened. Yeah. So Lowndes County Sheriff Ashley Polk, I think that's how you say that. P A U L K said, quote, if there's questions and they're legitimate, I need to know the answers myself. The only way I'm going to know is to look at the evidence myself. So he's a new sheriff. There's a new sheriff in town. Um, he's not the same one that was on the case because that guy was a joke. Um, so Paul and his team were able to obtain evidence from the federal authorities, in part thanks to an appeal from Johnson's family in November of 2020. The sheriffs now hopefully have enough evidence to allow them to solve this case for once and for all. Though Polk said the investigation may take up to six months, both he and the Johnson family are optimistic that justice will finally be served. Wow. Yeah. So are the only suspects right now those two boys? Well, they're not even considered suspects at this time. They were like persons of interest back during the original investigation, but not even really. Okay. You know, they are persons of interest. Right. But there's like nobody else that they've ever suspected or anything. Not that not that they've ever come forward and acknowledged publicly. Okay. So Kendrick's mother, Jacqueline, stated it's been eight long years and I'm feeling hopeful. Which like wham, Oh my gosh. Cry. I know. One week after the case had been reopened, the Johnsons came forward with a recording that they paid a thousand dollars for given to them by a man claiming to be one of the Bell's cousins or second cousins, technically. Um, On that recording, a male voice, which is allegedly Brian Bell, says, quote, They're going to catch me anyway. I should have never done this. I was young and stupid. Kendrick didn't deserve this man. And after a moment of silence, the voice, sounding as if it was cracking and starting to cry, repeats, They're going to catch me anyways. Okay. Polk said that he did not know if the Bells even had a second cousin, which later it found out that they do not. But the sheriff knew the man who provided the Johnsons the tape, and he quickly determined that the recording was not authentic. He said that this guy has been in jail several times. Mm. What for? Giving false statements. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like, ugh, I hate that they paid $1,000 for it, but I totally get why they did it because they really thought that, like, they had something, you know? Yeah. He had reopened the case in hopes of bringing closure to a community that's been divided, mostly along racial lines from the onset of the case. Polk said that he told the Johnsons they had most likely been duped, which just sucks. 
As of now, there have been no more leads or developments that we know of in the case. However, I feel they are definitely drawing close to finding out what really happened to Kendrick KJ Johnson. And I pray that his family and Ken- Kendrick finally get the justice and peace that they deserve. Yeah. Wow. I so. didn't know that it was like officially reopened and stuff. That is huge. Yeah, I know. I So I follow a page on um, Facebook. Um, I think it's called Finding – or no, it's Justice for Kendrick Johnson. Okay. And ever since I heard this – um case on crime junkie i've been following it and i occasionally will go on there and to see if there's any updates and i saw that they had reopened the case and i was just like ah, i gotta do this because yeah. like i was really hoping that i would come across like you know some evidence that had been uncovered or you know a lead or something like that but like he said it could take up to six months which is like march april may june july august has been five months and but we don't know. We don't know what they've really uncovered. You know, they're not going to come forth until they really have something. But especially in such a high profile case like this, like this one, so many people know about now. And so they're probably not going to yeah. say anything until they for sure know what is going on. Right. Which is good. Because like, if it is, you know, certain people, like, if it is Brian Bill, like he's a, like he was a professional football player. And now he's like a, um, or maybe was that a pressure? Or he played like college football. Okay. He was like a big name. Now he's like a coach for Tennessee something. I don't know. Okay. Um, so they have to, you know, tread lightly with these kind of things. So right. Again, not saying it was him. <laughs> right. And I mean, even like with the Kristen Smart case, like before they arrested Paul Flores, a bunch had been going on, but they didn't say any of that until he had been arrested. Right. So it could yeah. be the same type of thing. Like they're not, especially in such a cold case. They're probably not yeah. going to say anything until they're, like, actually going to arrest somebody. Right. Because you don't want those people to run or, like, you know, lawyer up and get real tight and, like, not right. be able to, like, get to them and stuff. So I definitely get that. But I really, really, really hope in the next, like, couple months we hear something because I just – I feel like it's not – like, it's not what they what they think it is, what they thought it is. Like, I think yeah. his family is right. And I just really hope that they get some justice finally. Me too. And if they do, um, you'll have to do an update. Oh, absolutely. I would definitely do an update because this is one that like, like I said, it's, it's one of those top 10 cases that like really right. just, uh, you know, Yeah. but make sure you're following us over on Instagram at inhuman underscore podcast. I will be having, um, or I will be posting pictures of Kendrick and his family. And like, you know, if we do have any updates, I will try to post that on, um on our instagram and then you know possibly twitter because yeah. i know like that's more like fast acting and right like, by the minute yeah um so make sure you're following us on twitter tiktok instagram it's all inhuman underscore podcast tiktok's not tiktok's inhuman podcast oh yeah it's just inhuman podcast and so is the facebook it's just inhuman podcast so make sure you're following us or all of the things and don't forget to leave us a review because we are trying to get to 50 by the end of the year i think we have like what 20 27 27 27, 28 something around there so we're getting closer yeah yeah so we've gotten a few more so thank you guys whoever you are for rating us on apple Podcasts. and if you are listening on spotify um subscribe follow us whatever they do Yeah. yeah whatever they do over there (laughs) <laughs> um, but we just want to thank you guys so much for listening. We want to thank you guys always for your support and until next time, keep it human. Bye.